Hi everyone, welcome to Two Bald Guys Talking Safety. I'm Langdon DeMint. And I'm Julian Taylor. And welcome to our podcast. Welcome, Jules. And welcome, audience, to Two Bald Guys Talking Safety. I'm Langdon DeMint, here with my dear compadre, Julian Taylor. How are you, buddy? I'm good, mate. How are you? Got that little frisson of excitement today because we're we're live. Yes. We have no room for edits. Not that we is, obviously ed, edit that much, but yeah. You know, you and I edit nothing anyway because we don't really know how. But yes, <laughs> it's it's tough to fix perfection that occasionally yeah. comes once out of a million. So it's good to have <laughs> have you here occasionally. <laughs> it's yeah. good, yeah. Occasionally, it's good to be here. Hope uh, all of you that are joining are ready to expand the minds and learn more about Hascom and other frivolities that we decide to embark upon. I was going to say, well, I was going to say you talk about expanding the mind. I don't set the bar too high here, Langdon. That was all I was going to say. Well, yeah. You know, if it depends on where we'll we begin, it's the way, yeah, yeah. it's where I like to begin. What, before we get started, what's, uh, what's happening in your world? Anything special? Um, just had a couple of days of holiday, so had a bit of time with the family. And then yesterday I was sailing on a Cat Zero yacht down the Humber in the UK. So that's a big 70-foot sailing yacht, which was was great. And it was nice and windy as well, so we were probably tilted over at, at, at one point. So, But obviously nice. lots of safety discussions beforehand about the things that you should do, the things that you shouldn't do to stay safe. How about you? Mm. You know, I, before I go to me, we need to, this has just come to me right now. We need to have a discussion at some point that should something adverse happen to the other brother and yeah. we have a podcast the next day, do we go on and record per usual or do we take a you know, sabbatical for like a week? We need to figure that no, out. I, th I, th I think I think if it was me, I would want the show to go on. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Just, so so um, make that's a good. note. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Write it down. We continue on no matter what. Yeah. Um, you know, not too much. I was finally able to play a little golf last week, and then we have we're in the midst of baseball, well, T ball and coach pitch softball for both the kids. So. We've had games Monday, Tuesday, and then a doubleheader. I say doubleheader. Two games Thursday, both of them. One at six and one at eight. So outside of work, we are in the midst of baseball season. That's pretty much my life. Pretty strong. But but a bit of travel coming up. Yep. Headed to your land, the motherland. Well, north Not my motherland, Scotland. but... Yeah. yeah, different motherland. The home of yep. golf. The home of golf, so, yeah. yeah. We'll be there. Everyone, we will be reunited next Monday. Um, we won't be doing a podcast or anything, but we will be reunited in, well, the east coast of Scotland somewhere. Getting to spend some time together, which should be good. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Lang Langdon did I ask me the crazy question of of, of what to pack, which mm. um, I said is is completely unpredictable um, in Scotland in June. So I would pack everything from a a, yes. a big thick fleece through to a pair of shorts and a t shirt. Yeah, and the weather shows mild, <laughs> which means it could be anything. So there's yeah, cool. that's pretty yeah. fair. Yeah, and speaking of pre unpredictability, well, actually, let me take a step back. Anyone, if you are listening and there is a comment that you have, please uh, put that in the chat. Hold I was going to forget that. So feel free. We will try to get to that at some point. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure when. But speaking of unpredictability, Jules, there's a lot happening here in the States. There there's is. a lot happening in the world of, yeah, of health and safety. It's the madness is beginning. Do you know what that is? Um, I do, but I'm going to let you tell our listeners yeah. about it. 
the there's a bit of a clue in the title, really. Yeah. Well, the panic is setting in. Yeah. Ascom changes are occurring. This is, um, you know, it's 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 coming out of nowhere. It really first started in about 2021 for the next revision. Now it's 2024, so it is really just coming right yeah. in. But we're finally making another alignment to to the GHS. Yeah, which is you know it's it's big. We um, we typically like to be very calculated and make sure that we in the states we we know what um, what we're doing and aligning to really mo- most of North America for the most part. So. I think this will be good. There's some some little nuances that really and truly, I dare say a lot of people, I mean, that you, you would be affected by, but you're not going to realize the difference. Um, you should, but most of the, uh, most workers probably, probably won't until they receive their, their training. But yeah, this will be the first alignment since uh, 2012, which was the main, the big dog and we are now going to be aligned to the seventh revision of the purple book which again that's actually a couple revisions behind but that's okay neither here nor there we are aligning to the rest of the world ish for people who don't know what's the purple book that is the united nations ghs um, best practice book for the whole world around hazard hazardous chemicals and substances cool. yep. labeling all that good stuff yeah and and i suppose a bit of history here because this this ah. has been going on for a while hasn't it um so i did do a bit of homework on this um and 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 it, and it first first kicked off in 1992 when the sort of uh there was a the earth summit was held in rio de janeiro um Mm. and there was sort of this recognition that um there was there was an inconsistency about the classification of of chemicals globally um and and that potentially could be confusing for even people using the same chemical in different locations or different geographies could find there were there were discrepancies, so it might be labelled as a, as toxic in one country and not toxic in another. Um, and, and one of the things here was that it it, it was seen as a barrier to, to international trade because mm-hmm. people might sort of shy away from bringing in chemicals from abroad if they thought there were going to be issues. Um, yeah. So that triggered this first sort of concept of putting together a globally harmonised standard, um, and and. It then sort of started to kick on um, sort of the next day I got was Johannesburg 2002. It was recognized as a global issue and taken forward. So we were laughing earlier saying people move quick in safety, don't they? 10 years and really, yeah. And and we moved 20 years for the States. (laughs) 20 years for the States. Yeah. Yeah. We were slightly ahead of you. Um, But, but really it's about, it, it was all about, like you say, the classification um, of, and, and sort of use of, of substances globally and, and having that consistency in terms of the, the way that happened. Um, so things like labeling, for example, it's pretty consistent across the world. Um, but I think one of the really interesting things was that it's not actually a, a, a sort of legal treaty. It's, mm-hmm. it's an optional thing, isn't it, Langdon? So it's still... Yeah something that not every country has to do it, it's an optional it's an optional thing that countries can choose to do and they can interpret yeah. things in their own way still which is where it kind of creates the ish part and you know some yeah. difficulty right because yeah I've, in the states we've we made the main adoptions to aligning to that and and that's the same way with this you know it's clarification around areas that they hope to provide more streamlined approaches, uh, better clarity, you know, whether it's the, uh, think about from a health hazards updates, physical hazards updates, the, the label elements, the uh, small adjustments around SDSs, which are, I think it's only affecting four sections, two, three, nine, yeah. and 
I don't remember the other one. I want to say 11. Um, okay. But, it, 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 you know, it's where we can have more clarity of understanding and hopefully better alignment to keep workers safe. So, if, and I think that's where this is really good. But at the same time, in the States or wherever you, you're working in that specific area, each, you know, regulatory body should help organizations in their countries be adherent to that, right? So for them, for the most part, it's probably going to be pretty much work as usual and better clarity because if something's come from overseas or something's come from from somewhere else, it, you can have the same the same understanding of what's what has what's occurring, what's being adopted, what yep. what this specific small package is, for example, um, for the labeling. Yep. But it's for the you know for something you just said. It's where you have the problem of well, this country didn't adopt this because they wanted to keep it you know whatever something historical. Yep. That's when you that's when we could see some issues, but I don't really foresee, you know, I don't foresee that happening, especially here in North America. It's aligning more so to Canada again. So WMIS um, and, and other, we'll say, local uh, agencies and best practice for organizations if they're international. So, you know, to me, this is, it's going to be a big, a big thing that's being pushed. If you, I'm sure most of you, uh, if you've looked at any health and safety, whether it's a website or a publication, we're in the time now where it's being spoken about pretty regular, which, hey, it's good. Bring it to the forefront. Let's get it, make our changes and get people trained and roll on. So talking of training, what are some of the key things that are changing in, in the U.S.? Hopefully, um, everyone is going to be trained, and that's going to. Be, so the training is one of the, you know, from OSHA or others. That's one of the, I'll say, quickest, easiest things to ensure that organizations are adhering to. So there's some changes, and I, I would consider everyone, if if you have it, to. There's actually a side by side comparison on OSHA from the 2012 update to the to the 2024 now, where I want to say it's redlining. It, it's really good. So it shows what has changed, what's not, but you want to make sure, as per usual, everyone is trained around the hazard communication standards of 1910-12 or dot twelve hundred. You want to make sure everyone understands what chemicals are working at in, the, in their own organization. But now you have to make sure that workers are additionally trained to the new adoption. So you know we've gone through periods of, I think there's a. You know, there, there'll be a calendar that comes out of compliance dates. So for a little while that you can comply to the to the previous standard, the new standard, both as long as you're doing it. But you're going to want to make sure that, you know, as per always, employees understand what they're working with, what the changes are, the language, the the labeling, the SDS is, which hopefully they are anyway, the, the new classification of, of the hazards, whether it's physical health hazards. Um, some of those trade secrets, which, you know, that's when it starts really. And, and I think most organizations from that standpoint are going to be pretty abreast because chemical manufacturers, importers, the ones that are dealing very heavily with it, most of, not always, of course, you know, not, knock on wood, but most are going to be aware of a lot of the changes that are occurring because they potentially already had to deal with it, especially if they have global operations. So when we think about training, it's just making sure everyone is is abreast of that, so that they can be prepared when dealing with it. And they can they can know what the most recent update is because you know this was first brought up in 2021, and again in that very quick timeline that we like to <laughs> to utilize 2024, we're we're getting in on it. So um, so here in the next month, it'll it'll be really going into effect more so, and you'll start seeing more organizations do that. So we need to you know just uh, I would I highly encourage you to go to OSHA's website, look at that. Honestly, the side by side or whatever. Um, if you have something from your from a chemical supplier or manufacturer, something that would help provide clarity just so everyone can be trained on that. And, and because there is a lot of trickle down, I'll say quote unquote content or or whatnot that, that could be affected just to make sure everything has been uh, has been updated. I do, I, I, I do believe you've written a blog on it as well. Oh, 
Thanks. Uh, there is so we we did. Um, I did a blog. It's the first one. We're gonna we probably. I'll do a couple. Just first one is a high level talking about some of what what is being what's being done, what's being released, and then we'll have an. I'll do another one that kind of hits a little more a little more in depth on it. But it's that thirty thousand foot overview, and there's actually a couple of areas for for resources. Thanks, Jules. Appreciate that. Yeah. I noticed okay. uh, I'm going to come back to the training in a minute because I think that's a really, really mm -hmm. important part of this. I think all, all of these all of these sort of safety things that come out, safety initiatives, safety sort of regulations, um, the whole point should be simplifying things and making it really easy for people at the sharp end who are using a substance to, to do it in the safest way possible. I'll come back to that in a minute. You mentioned something else there about trade secrets that just thought was a bit interesting, Langdon. I didn't know whether you wanted to expand on that. Mm, I'd rather not, but I can. So there's some tra organizations have trade secrets. The the new, well, I say the new revision for 2012 is just ensuring that those updates they they include the that that list of prescribed concentration ranges. So, you know, whatever the concentration of is of a specific chemical, the exact percentages, the percentage ranges of the materials, that's, um, that's trade secret. So that that's updated to where they have to include those mandatory trade secrets. And a lot of those align to Canada's WMIS, which they've already, I, be well, I believe, I don't know which revision, but they've already kind of adopted. So that will, yeah. that'll help. that's where that trade secret yeah comes into place so they don't have to put an exact concentration in they can put a, a range in can't they now um yeah it's a minute it's, it's a range, I, i'm just you know? yeah yeah <laughs> i'm just imagining their their major competitors though just okay we've got a range here between one and five let's just try each one until we get this right yeah well you know um, it's you, you got to keep a little secret until you know you gotta keep businesses rolling so it is kind of humorous yeah. honestly stuff like that yeah. how they're trying to yeah. help but reel it in just a little bit yeah yeah and i mean in in in, in the uk and europe this this sort of aligns to or it feeds into or it's, it's sort of supported by the regulations that that we've got in place so things like we've got the chip regs which are hazard information and, and packaging supply regulations which goes back to 2002 um but again it's talking about the fact that importers and suppliers have got to provide the right well it's got to be packaged with the right labeling and 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 things like it's got to have the this the the s the ghs sds it's got to have a safety data sheet associated to it as well um and 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 that's both in business to business but also in retail as well so if and, and you'll notice if you buy anything sort of personally you should still get that that safety data sheet that that tells you how to Mm -hmm. use transport dispose of all, all all the sort of same things that you're going to do in a business and do it safely and, and without harming people or the environment and then yeah. the bit that's close to my heart is is actually how do we tell the people at the sharp end how to use it safely so what do we think about in terms of risk assessment and in the uk that's that's under cosh so control of substances mm -hmm. hazardous to health where it talks about the fact you've got to do a risk assessment, um, but but also it talks about this training piece again. Um, so it talks about we've got to train people um, effectively if they're going to be using hazardous substances. Um, so there's got to be an assessment, but we've also got to provide information, instruction, and training for people who are going to be exposed to those substances. Yeah, so. So, and, and this is a bit that always I, I find, I think people need to get focused on because quite often what you see is that in, in effect, the risk assessment almost becomes a replica of the safety data sheet. Um, and you think about a safety data sheet with 16 sections in it, um, for, for somebody on the shop floor just doing a job, they just want to know what, what applies to them. So there's a danger they they don't read it at all or they don't understand it if the if, if the information's too complex. So I think one of the key things about the risk assessment is is distilling that down, um, and and simplifying it so it's easy for people to be able to understand that information and put it into practice for whatever it is that they're doing. Um, 
And uh, I went to see, uh, this is years ago, I went to see a lady called Kath, uh, an NHS trust in, in a place called Telford in the UK. And she was a really knowledgeable lady and, and, and she really hammered it home for me. And she was talking about the fact that a lot of people just replicate the safety data sheet. And, and, and she gave an example of, of, of a treatment for, I think it was some kind of chemotherapy, probably for a, a treatment for liver cancer. Um, and she talked about the fact that the substance might be delivered into the trust, into a stores in, in, in a container. Um, it might then be stored for a period of time. It might then be sort of, um, decanted into a smaller container. A porter might then take it from the stores through to, through to the ward the, where, where, where the, the patient's been treated. A nurse would then actually administer and, and use, use the treatment. And then there were waste byproducts that then needed to be disposed of effectively at the end of the process. And, and the point Kath made was a really simple one, which was actually every one of those people. So the person in the stores, the porter, the nurse, the person who then disposes of it, each one of those people needs to be able to just look at a simple risk assessment that tells them the information that they need to understand. Mm -hmm. So what are the control met control controls they're going to put into place? What kind of PPE do they need to wear if, if they're going to use this, this thing safely or, or move it safely? And it was really all about simplifying this whole thing around chemicals down to just good risk assessment practice which I think in a lot of cases gets forgotten. So in, in, in your land, sort of JHA, we talk about risk assessments, but it's the same kind of thing where for somebody doing, a, doing something within a workplace, what do they need to know? And actually, can they see that information quickly and easily and can they understand it? So I think that's one well, of the key things, key, key takeaways for me from this is, yeah, we've, we've got all the GHS piece, we then need to distill it down if we're going to risk assess mm -hmm. effectively. Well, and I think, no, that's a great point because with all this, it kind of stems or hopefully they, you know, OSHA always puts a economic impact. They say that this is going to do, oh, it'll save however many lives, a million employees will be af um, affected and it'll save $30 million a year. You know, that they always do that. Is that your, is that your still, OSHA voice? That is my voice. You should go a little deeper okay. and get more specific. Good for, so, good for the us. final rule. Yeah, will, yeah thank you. Um, you know, and they always do that, and it does. It to me, I totally agree. It goes to what you just said because it's it's how everyone's going to disseminate the information. How are they going to then spread that information out? Because if 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 we keep you know if we keep doing things or not doing things, maybe the way we have been. So let's say we don't have good chemical assessments. We don't have very, if, if we have to do a process hazard analysis, if we're dealing with a lot of chemicals or even simple JHAs that involve it, you know, if, if we're not doing some of that anyways, maybe we're not doing that very well. It, you know, this is not going to affect that. So let's please, you know, bear that in mind, but it, yeah. it is saying that there is something new. There is something that Maybe historically we haven't been addressing in an organization very well. This is a perfect opportunity to, hey, you know what? Let's look at our assessments. Let's yeah. look at our hazard analysis. Let's look at the chemicals we're working with. Because, you know, that scenario you gave, it, that's perfect. A few years ago, I was working with an organization and they were cancer uh, research healthcare. And a lot of, you know, in their lab settings, a lot of what they're working with, they there was no SDS. I mean, it's their new chemicals, their new mixtures. And, and we were actually working a little bit from a chemical standpoint, trying to help them with that. But it is, it's a, it's totally, it's totally different because then you do have your, the creation of new, the mixtures, then you have the waste disposal, which this also is supposed to help align to EPA, to DOT. There's some of that yep. um, coordination with other U S agencies, you know, for us here in the States. So, there is a lot of, I'm not going to say nuances, but hopefully uh, differentials that will that will come into place yeah. and, and help. And hopefully, I, I think you know something you were you were hitting on. It's for for most people out there, right? Hopefully, this is just something that hey, there's a new update. And the way I view it is, 
well, what is this new safety update? And, you know, the you know, frontline employees, mid, mid-level mid managers, if it's something that can at least spark something to, hey, what are we doing? Do we need to make any changes? Is this, you know, make that introspective look at what they're doing, the processes they have, the the programs they have in place. That's when you start seeing a, a better change and more cognizance, right, to, to EHS as a whole. And to me, I know that's, we're taking it a step back, but. That is, that's the important, you know, that's the important thing. Yes, it's it's ensuring everyone is able to do the job healthy and safe, but yeah. sometimes we get caught up in the everyday and and we don't. So if we can start reviewing our what we have already in place, remember that most of those treat them as living documents, we can start seeing, I think, a better adaptability really in general to to health and safety. Yeah, I think... I think that's a really good point about the living documents. I think the danger is with a lot of these things is they just they just become a bit of a tick box exercise where they're created and nobody really pays them much attention. So I think mm-hmm. it's thinking about how you can actually make it so that people do look at them on a more regular basis. People do revisit them and can we hone them and can we refine them? Um, and I think I, I just want to clarify: I'm not knocking safety data sheets when I'm talking about the risk <laughs> assessments. I think I think yeah, no. the, the 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 globally harmonised system is a is a really great step forward. It has been a great step forward in terms of of doing things more consistently, providing information. And actually, when you think about things I talked about earlier, like the training and the instruction, the creation of a of a in our world, a cost assessment or a chemical risk assessment, you couldn't do that without the safety data sheet. So, yeah. so it's it, it's a really good step forward. But I think you've got what you've got to think about is right. Where does each of these things sit within in in, in, in terms of our safety management system and our approach to safety? Yeah. Well, no, exactly. I I totally agree. But and let's look at it from a simplistic well, term here. If we think about so one of the changes is around definitions. One of the new definition definition definitions definitions is around <laughs> combustible dust. Yeah. I can I mean I most people if they just go online you can type in combustible dust um, health and safety whatever. You'll see yeah. <clears throat> excuse me you'll see like the Imperial Sugar Factory fire. Honestly that was kind of combustible dust that created that issue. I mean it was particular to of, um, yeah. of sugar, of course, but basically that. So, you know, there's a definition, a new definition around that. So it's a little clarity like that, that, yeah, most people, it's not about understanding. Do you know what section three of the SDS says? No. Do you know where to find that and know where yeah. to understand that? How is that going to apply to to what you're doing? That's when you start seeing, and that's hopefully what, what most people, when we, when we're doing a lot of the podcasts, when, you know, when we're out and I'm doing health and safety organizations and trying to help internally, it's, it's putting things in perspective of how it's applied and how we can help uh, organizations and frontline workers and, you know, senior level all in between understand some of these changes or understand how, how we can align to be, you know, healthy and safe. And it's not just, always referring back to the SDS where, you know, it's easy to go back and just kind of skim it and say, okay, I got it uh, versus actually understanding the applicability. Yeah. Yeah. I, d- I did like your comment oh, b- before we carry on. I think just, just to re mm-hmm. just to remind people, if you want to ask any questions or, or add any comments in, please throw them into the comment section and we'll try to get to those. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought there. Oh, yeah. I think I think the the other thing is thinking about that instruction and training is is really stopping and thinking. Although all those sort of those hazardous labels, do people really understand those? And there's a there's a danger we kind of throw risk assessments at people, and and we haven't really either checked the understanding or or really gone into the detail that we need to go into. If, if they're going to be able to use that effectively. So, for example, if a, if a package does show up and it's got labels on it, 
do people actually understand what those labels are telling them and, and what they should consider before handling, decanting or, or, or using that substance? Yeah. No, I think that's because that's part of it. I mean, that's a big, if you look a lot of the, uh, the subdated standard there, they are focusing on the, on labels of small packaging. So it's more comprehensive and readable, but no, I think that's a great point is how often do we have a lot of these things, but we don't really understand what they mean. We're not reviewing them very much. And, and I think that's when we hit problems in general in, in health and safety. Um, you know, we're, we're wanting to protect first responders or wanting to protect workers as a whole who are having to, to deal with these. Um, but if, if we don't instill that training, if we don't instill that, uh, that learning of understanding what it means, we're, is this really going to make an impact? I'm, I know I'm being a little condescending maybe, but no, <laughs> you know, so it's, what can we do differently with this? And this is just one example. I mean, there's stuff, I won't say all the time, but there's things that are changing relatively uh, occasionally from a regulatory standpoint or um, local best practice, whatnot. So I, I think I think it's something to bear in mind is what, how can we use this to maybe spur some, some positivity if we're in an organization? We don't. We're yeah. just kind of stalled out. It, this could be a great time to review, you know? Yeah, I think I, I think there's always a danger in safety, isn't it? I, I was going to say that we take it for granted, and and and, I, and, I, and that kind of sounds bad, but and it's not meant to be as negative as it sounds. But there's a danger, isn't there, that we we create documents, we create risk assessments, we create HASCHEM assessments, whatever whatever we want to call them, and and like I said earlier, they they don't get looked at on a regular basis, so they don't get reviewed on a regular basis. One of the biggest challenges we see when we talk to organizations is, is that actually they, they have issues around just simply reviewing all the documents that they've created because there's such a wealth of them. Um, and, 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 and absolutely there, there's that danger then that the, the information is either not being understood, new people aren't getting to be told about that information, and, and the information also is 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 getting out of date because it's not being sort of looked at again. So I think any any sort of moment in history like this where regs are changing, and I know we're talking to a global audience and we're talking about American regs that are changing, but maybe this is the prompt for for anybody wherever you're based to say, right, is 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 this a time to? To go back and take another look at the way that we manage our our sort of chemical management okay we've got these globally harmonized symbols does everybody in our business understand them for example and if not let's yeah. let's let's do something about that yeah um well uh, no I, I agree especially because you know I mean, we know i say you know we know they're already working on the ninth or 10th revision, for example. So <laughs> yeah. there's going to be something else. I mean, everyone's going to going to, well, I'll say everyone, most people will, most countries will probably make some type of adoption to that and, and see, so it, it'll continue to, to go around, kind of be refined, if you will. So I, I think, I think that's a great point. It, it's about what can we do to ensure that we are trying to stay abreast as best we can. Yeah, yeah. How, how many? This is just a completely off the wall question. I know what you're going to say. I wonder, I wonder how, how many how many GHS SDSs are there in the world? I wonder. It's. it's, Wait, it's I, don't, I don't know. Because and you know, for the longest, it's kind of like the simple people still refer to it as an MSDS over here, material safety yeah, data yeah. Sheet, sheet. So, well, um, oh, millions. Millions, yeah. Um, Upon millions, and and yeah, and you start you start then thinking about any business that's using lots of substances. Um, I mean, it, it it could it can quickly become quite overwhelming for people, can't it? Just the sheer amount of information that that you're having to digest, distill, sort of, and then disseminate out to other people, isn't it? 
Well, and that that's actually a really good point that we haven't hit on because then if there has been a change to something you're you're using, which I'm, I'm sure for especially for those that are dealing with you know many chemicals, they probably will experience some changes. For them, then they have to make sure they have the most updated label. They have the most updated SDS, which then will mean, yeah, we do have to do a new, a new assessment or a new hazard analysis. We have to start maintaining, and then we have to train people to understand, you know. So there is a lot of, upon that, which will mean there is a new SDS, um, which adds yep. to that historical d- database of safety yep. data sheets or, or whatnot. So that, that's a whole nother, I think, thing to keep in mind is, for those, if they're if they're getting their SDS, is hey, we, we want to make sure we have the most recent one, not yeah. And then you're thinking you're training people on the one, and it was maybe the the wrong one. So yeah, that's a it's actually a really good point. And because because that's the thing, these things can change fairly regularly, can't they? So mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, interesting, it's fun times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's about all I can say around Hascom. Well, I mean, we could go deeper, but we pretty... we could we 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 could ramble for ages. But I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't necessarily a ma- massive amount of value in doing that. I think I think we've mm-hmm. come up come up with a couple of good points there. Um, yeah, I think it's it's being aware of 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 of. Okay, so how does GHS SDS apply in your sort of local geography? Um, Mm-hmm. be aware of any changes that are happening but i think the key thing for me as always with any of this is is actually how does it actually relate to keeping people safe and keeping the environment protected on a day-to-day basis um and i think coming back to those some of those simple principles around distilling and simplifying the information so that people who are exposed to affected by or using a substance um know what they've got to do to keep themselves safe um i think that's the critical piece out of all of this for me um it it, is that keeping people safe at the end of the day oh for sure and just uh you know i know it's going to be in effect pretty much i think it goes in july 19th so like july 20 it'll be in effect but for for us in the states but just understanding that those new implications how that's applied how we can train and and keep people abreast of it i mean that's i totally agree it's about trying to make sure that people understand um, the changes that they understand what they're working with so we can keep people you know healthy and safe um during that timeline you know organizations can use the old or the new rule so and there's going to be a phase set of implementation so when you really start thinking about it a lot of this is not even going to be fully rolled out meaning organizations have to adhere to it on this date that date is not this year it's 2026 so so even though it's coming into effect they will start kind of working and and massaging that and ensuring that organizations are you know adhering to it and and that's where you hopefully everyone can start kind of thinking about how how they can do that if they haven't already um, what these changes mean and how, I mean, ultimately, what do we try to do? Get better involvement for, for workplaces and for, for people. Yeah. So if we can. An understanding. That, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. I, I, it, well it, it is just, it, it's taking me back to 2015 this, um, because in the UK it was, I think it was October, 2015 when, when the move was made from MSDS to, to GHS SDS. Um, I can remember the panic then about, oh, what are we going to do? And can we use these for a period of time and before we move to the new version? And, and it's it's just a way of life now. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, the other problem with MSDS was some people thought I was talking about musculoskeletal disorders. So, um, <laughs> MSD, so, uh, I think, yes. yeah. So, so, so I think it's it's good that actually it's now GHS and that it's take, at least taken that confusion out of the conversation. For some people, hasn't it? So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully, Good. this has been an enlightening, high-level discussion. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, we're always grateful for people jumping on and listening to the live episodes. The recorded pods will continue yeah. to come. 
We've got some good guests coming up in the next few episodes, so keep your eyes open for those on all the usual sort of podco- pod- podcast platforms. That's not easy for me to say. Um, Langdon, I'm going to let you let you sign us off. Thanks, Jules. So everyone, as you are now embarking on a new regulatory change as the uh, spazzing begins, just remember to ultimately stay calm. This is a transitional period and work together and watch each other's back out there and stay safe, everyone. Hey everyone, really appreciate you tuning into this episode of Two Bald Guys Talking Safety. Please follow and subscribe to wherever you stream your favorite podcast or visit us at evotix.com. And if you want to see how follically challenged we really are, come and check us out on YouTube. If you've got value from the podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts and in the review section of this podcast, if you could leave us a review or a rating, that would be great. And as always, everyone, while you're going about your days, about your normal lives, stay safe out there and watch each other's back.